Uh, yeah. Thank you and good evening. I'm not sure that this mic works fine. Thanks. Yeah, so this is not the first slide of my presentation. This is the Slido, and please don't hesitate to ask questions. <laughs> Still, I believe that my presentation is not very questionable. <laughs> uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> and here we go. So this will be a presentation about open street maps. Uh, and uh, it's an extended version of a speech which I gave on the PyCon earlier this year. And it's all about how to, uh, how to explore new places through API. Uh, before we jump in, does this work? Yeah, it does. A bit about myself. I graduated in nuclear physics. I think the same faculty as uh, Honza did. But I never worked in that field. Uh, I, I've been in data science since my graduation. I often joke uh, about my age that I've been, I was in that field before that term was uh, invested. And uh, if you ever want to ask me about anything, not necessarily about maps, you can contact me at LinkedIn and at the, on the very bottom, uh, let's storm. On the very bottom, <laughs> this is my GitHub account where you find many things and among those also this presentation and the notebook, notebook, notebook with all possible code snippets. So my goal today is to convince you that each of you, even the most beginning beginner, can start using uh, OpenStreetMaps tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's a simple. I will not uh, charm you with some highly optimized code. I'm using some basic methods really with the hope to, to, to um, tell you it's easy to use the content of the maps. So, as I said, it's, it's a PyCon uh, presentation, so uh, it all starts with a look in the map. And the idea of the entire presentation is you look into the map to understand a neighborhood. And neighborhood could be the place which you're going to visit on your Sunday trip, or it could be a place where you're considering opening a new branch, or whatever. And uh, let me make a short poll. Uh, if you go to a new place for a trip, do you ever look in the map to find whatever you need to? Who does? I, yeah, it's, <laughs> I would say over 100%. It's <laughs> no, it was convincing. <laughs> all, all the hands are raised up. Yeah, I, I think it's a common, it's a common and uh, meaningful approach. What I wanted to highlight uh, at the Python, where many people were not from Ostrava, that close to the place you found three museums, then you found some public stops, then you found a library and a um, playground for children, and you can really look in the map to, to explore many things. You can think about your own, you can support your customer who wants to know what is the district of my customer like. Uh, we will get to some use cases here. The idea why to use API is that uh, if someone asks you, could you find a playground or could you find a museum for all locations in our database, you can look like once, twice, three or four times, but how many times can you visually inspect what's in the map? I believe that if you have many or even more, like number of uh, big data, uh, number of rows, you either get desperate or what I'm going to propose, you can uh, use a source of information which is rich on content and which has a decent API. And for me, these are open street maps. So in the rest of the presentation, I will show you how to do this inspection of a map, but not visually, but how to code it so that you get get a feeling of what's the neighborhood around for many neighborhoods. Yeah, so this is the outline. Uh, we will first decide what we're after, what we're looking for. Then I will show you how to find it manually in the OpenStreetMaps, and that's really not a hard task. Then we will replicate that manual search through a query. And then we will put this query into a Python, parameterize it and serialize. And in the end, I will give some hints how to make sure that you're downloading all points of interest that are relevant to you. And the use case here is uh, you can be asked, are there any libraries around here? So this, this is a use case for an online librarian service that wants to distribute offers of uh, subscriptions. They have some subscriptions which can be for free, 
and they want to know which people live close to a library so they are less likely to uh, to uh, accept such an offer or which people live in districts which are deficient or which are missing libraries and although we're going to illustrate those five steps on uh, search for libraries uh, I'm sure that it holds for all the types of analysis. So it could be that you want to find out whether the location where your customers live is a residential or more uh, or more industrial, or which since I, I mean this is a proxy for wealth, right? You we want to live in Orechovka, not not in, and now I don't want to call the place where I grew up, <laughs> but I mean industrial places. You can also think about if you want to compare districts across cities to find out whether your impression that you have too little or too many too few or too many bus stops whether whether it's uh, outright it yeah you can look in the map or for our uh, weekend trips we often want to find a restaurant which has a cheaper playground in nearby and indeed you can go in a map and then zoom unzoom zoom unzoom to find out where these places are but it's much better to run it through apis and I know that my colleagues in Twisto that they were uh, delighted by sharing some queries which find them children playgrounds with restaurants nearby. Yeah, but what we're looking for now are libraries. So I said the, the initial step is to find the library manually. So you go to www.openstreetmap.org and you guess what to seek for. So. For library, the guess uh, Knihovna works fine, and I, I don't think I want to do a live demo here since uh, I assume you know how to search in a, in a map, and uh, this uh, setup is not really <laughs> so helpful for doing uh, live demos. So what you got is one one library, one arbitrary library, and. Uh, you don't need to search for any specific one. You do this search to prepare for the next step, which is to replicate that search through code. So this is a how a description of any node in uh, OSM would look like. Uh, it shows you where this library is. It tells you it's mapped as a node. We will work with that later. It tells you the exact location. It tells you what tags are used to describe this library. And the important tag here is that amenity is of type library. You also see the street number and the district and the zip code, but what I want to highlight here that amenity library looks very general. It can be used for all libraries, whereas indeed not all libraries are in Ostrava Witkowice. Yeah, so we found one library. So now we must replicate this through a query. And uh, there are two facts you shall know about OSM, and this is how are objects mapped in the OpenStreetMaps. And those two facts are every object consists of points. So be it a statue, be it a house, be it a river, it's all delimited by points. And the second fact is that every object can be tagged. Points are used to really delimit the, the location of the object, whereas tags Tell you the tell you the contact whether it's a library or a statue or whatever else, and a bit more to this, uh, there are conceptually three types of objects in a, in the OpenStreetMaps. So node, way, and relation. Node is uh, a single point. It's a point-like uh, object. It can be a statue, a fountain. It can be a telephone booth. Simply anything which on the map you can depict as a as a point object. Then you have the way. Ways are uh, linear or I would say aerial uh, objects. It can be a road or park. Some ways are uh, like delimited. It could be a court, inner court of a building. Others are open. It could be a river, right, from the spring to the to the delta. Yeah, and the third one are relations. And the relations, think about them as a collections of other objects. A nice example is the country of Indonesia, right? You know it consists of many islands. If every island if every island was mapped as a as a polygon, which is a way, then a collection of all these islands would be uh, 
called relation and that would that would uh, comprise the entire country of Indonesia. Yeah, so to the first thing, we map objects through points and conceptually there are knots, there are ways and relations in OSM. To extend the uh, other fact, uh, tags are how you provide content to the points. Uh, tagging schema... Then let me pause for a while. <laughs> Tagging schema is simple here. You <laughs> Yeah, we want more, right? Encore! <laughs> Tagging works by providing the pairs of key and value, right? For a road, you could say a key would be surface and value asphalt, or for a library, you saw amenity is a key and library is the is the value and the list of features is something I often oftentimes find myself surprised by. It's extremely rich in uh, in OpenStreetMaps. This is a page with the most prominent features. If you look on the scroller here, here on the right, you see it's a long page. It's it's, it's loading <laughs> long. And then for, um, for say, so this would be station of aerial way, you find whether it most often um, exists in knots, or here it's knots and areas, how it typically looks like, how it renders in the map, and I sort of like going through this list since it shows you that the map can contain really everything. Recommended to go through this. Yeah, so back to slides. Uh, important thing I shall say is that there is not really a schema, some limited number of keys or values in the OSM. Everyone is uh, encouraged to invent his or her own tag. Everyone is encouraged to uh, contribute to the map. And over the time, you can be contacted by other users telling you that if a road is asphalt, you shall use surface asphalt, not asphalt yes. But I think that's fine. Overall, I find it very comprehensive. Yeah, so you know how to map things, and then you need to know how to query those objects in OSM database. So there is a dedicated query language in the OpenStreetMaps, and I find it quite uh, comprehensible. You say what type of objects you're querying, you're looking for. So that would be node, or way, or relationship. Then you use these parentheses to say what tags you're interested in, right? You, you don't want to download all the points, you want to find, in our case, libraries only. Then you use the standard parentheses to say where to search, you probably don't want all the libraries on the globe, and then the keyword out. And uh, if we put these two things together, this is a query for that one library. So first we say we're interested in the node, then we are using this tag, which we found on the web page, to filter for libraries. Then we, I copied these coordinates, plugged them here, and prepended them by this operator around. I'm looking for libraries 50 meters around this place, and I'm having this outward here. And the query language is uh, quite rich. I find it well, rich, and at the same time, it's easy to, to learn it. I'm quite happy using it, and you can do many things there. For example, if you don't find the library 50 meters, you can extend this radius. And the good thing here is that uh, you don't have to run this code from Python uh, at the first step, since there is a web API, which is called Overpass Turbo. It's a web page which looks like this. This is where you write the code. Uh, here you see the results, you can load uh, your previous results or previous code there, uh, Yeah, you can run it, share it, indeed. Uh, the thing is that by running this piece of code, you get, uh, you get a pop-up which contains exactly the same piece of information as we saw in the manual search. And the good thing is here, a good thing here is that not only you see it visually, that's the library I found manually, you also have this data tab, and I will try a second demo now. 
to show you that this data tab is quite helpful since it shows you what's what's the data like no data loaded yet so let's give it a try understanding that output data is uh, is prerequisite for the next step fine yeah so first the results here in the map yeah looks like we found the same library and now to the data it's an XML which tells you what was the what was the map base uh, that's the one from this evening and then this not is the library right you see the latitude and longitude you see the internal ID in the OSM database you see this amenity library tag here you see the district and zip code exactly as we found manually and I hope this all makes sense since having this code is uh, something that enables us to search for libraries or restaurants or bars basically what we do now is that we I show you how to run that query in Python right through OSM query language we uh, assembled this piece of code. We ran it through overpass uh, turbo to see that it really works and returns what, what we want to. And all you need to do to replicate this from Python is to wrap it into, into some API calls. So I am using a library called overby and uh, on the second line I'm constructing the, the API object and then I'm running this query, this text against the uh, API and what I get is a is a list of dictionaries I think uh, the, in, in my github you find the notebook with the details but it basically tells you the first uh, first record in the dictionary is is this number and then all these tags are contained as a sorry the first input in the list is this number and the second uh, second member of that list is a dictionary which contains all these pairs and through this call I have all the data about the library which is available in OSM in my computer so uh, really details are in that notebook which uh, lies next to the presentation and uh, yeah, that there is more in appendix here. Uh, there are other libraries which I tried, but I'm really happy with Overby. That that really fits my needs. Uh, so, what's left is till now we were looking for that one specific library, translating the manual search into into the query search. What I'm going to do next is to parameterize that query and serialize it. And as I said, this is the simplest method to parameterize and serialize. I, I, don't, I don't want to charm you with any highly optimized code. I really want to, to, to condemn the message that each of us can start using it right tomorrow. Yeah, so my two parameters are called uh, latitude and longitude, and I'm inserting them into the query through formatting. It's the same code as before, it's just uh, formatting. And once I have this, I can run that code through many latitudes and, lo uh, and longitudes. So I combine them through zip and then run that query many times. And again, if you don't believe that it's that simple, please look into, <laughs> into my <laughs> specimen notebook. Yeah, and that's basically it. All I wanted to, uh, all I wanted to share uh, code-wise is here. The last hint that remains is how to make sure that you download all relevant points of interest. Uh, when it comes to relevancy, the, the, the OSM contains like I think 12 billions of uh, objects and I assume you don't want to download 12 billions of objects. Uh, you want to find few libraries which are in your neighborhood or you want to find wheelchair accessible bus stops. So my recommendation here is use tags, really. When, when preparing these queries, do use tags. It's much easier to go to that web page and find out that libraries are mapped like that than go through thousands of points and find out that 90% of them is a garbage, which is not interesting for you, and only find 10% of relevant points. Uh, when it comes to uh, downloading all points of interest, 
uh, I'm always using, and it's a good practice which I recommend, what they call union. So by uh, telling, by telling the, the API, I'm looking for nodes which are libraries and ways which are libraries and relations which are libraries. You're making sure that the large libraries, like the national one in the city center here, which are mapped as a relations, also pop up in, in, your, in your result. This is an example of uh, playgrounds which are close to, uh, close to the Python, uh, Python uh, venue. And you see that this playground with this number is mapped as a node. Whereas this is some sports center which has a tennis court and also maybe a swimming pool and uh, it's mapped as a leisure playground too. But if I limited myself to looking for nodes only, I would omit this one. Yeah, so the summary here is use text as a filters and use this uh, union syntax which tells, tells the, the database give me all nodes and ways and relations. Right, that's it. Uh, there are many more specimen uh, queries prepared for you. Uh, all of these demonstrate various uh, aspects of querying. All of them are published in the GitHub too, so I encourage you to go to, to GitHub, download that code and play with that. It's, it's a big fun. The other message I want to, uh, I want to uh, transmit is that it's easy to contribute to OSM. It all belongs to the community, right? It's not like you're using some, uh, some say, commercial web page where you enlist a new place and <laughs> it belongs to the commercial company. Uh, I will do a promo to OSM to this uh, this editor. So this is the address of Twistel in Carlin. Uh, if you want to change the opening hours of this restaurant, you click on that. You find the text of the text of the restaurant uh, here on the left. We can give it a try, and you just list the updated opening hours. It's that's it. Sangam. If I wanted to update the name, I just write it here. Uh, if I wanted to update the working hours, I would probably say here, working, or it's maybe opening hours. So if you have a fast internet, there is a pull-up telling you you want to, <laughs> you want to complete opening hours. But it's really that simple. Another option how to uh, contribute to OSM is to download an app which is called Map Your Way, I think. Well, app for app, app for a smartphone and wherever you go it's asking you for this street I don't know what's the surface, for this house I don't know the number and you can really insert it in a, in a visual fashion as you go. Yeah, we mapped part of the destinations where we go for holiday every year. So you're encouraged to start, and it's old version, so if you accidentally delete anything, it's fine, it can be restored easily. Yeah, so back to my slides, I think, yeah, we're at the end. There is a long, long appendix question, so I am happy to answer your questions and possibly to, <laughs> we can go through that, but that's really all for now, but please. Yeah, yeah, so the question was uh, whether there is some, um, some uh, Boolean logics in the queries, right? Could you say I'm either looking for a tram stops or for a bus stops? Y yes, it is. And um, it could be that it's in my examples. I, don't, I can't really uh, tell you the code by heart, but yeah, there is. Uh, there is also a concept which I found novel, but it could be that for those of you who are developers that you know that it's called it's called a recursion, I think, and that's if you say you're looking for a points which are close to the border of the Czech Republic, and one of those points hit the border, you may be interested in all uh, all ways or relations where points around your point of interest uh, where they occur. So using that, I found the entire border of Czech Republic. 
by looking for one point only, since I used the recursion, which told the query I am interested in all the relations which are somehow related to the point close to, it was a suburb of Dzieci, I think. But with the or and, it's definitely there. So maybe I have a related question. Uh, if, for example, uh, the query language uh, asks for points that are in a vicinity of, let's say, a couple of meters around something, uh, can you uh, can you somehow describe the area where you are looking for, like, for example, Prague number two, if you if you provide it with the polygon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me show you one of the demos there. So uh, we were filtering through this tag library, right? The other option is to use a name like Prague 2 or I set amenity equals library. So I provided both the key and the value. So you can look through keys only or through values only and you can even use regular expressions and let me see whether there is an example here. Yeah, so this example is with uh, is with regular expression, uh, and I was looking for libraries or playgrounds. So this is a way how you say or. Uh, I'm not sure if there is an example with uh, with plain name. No, there, there is not. But. I learned all of this from the OSM wiki page, and there you have examples. They are looking for sta states of the US which have some specific letters in the name. So, yeah, definitely. Fil filtering through names is possible here. Okay, so then there were some uh, questions by someone called Anonymous. <laughs> Shall I switch Slido? to Slido? And, yeah, so you can look for that. So. Here we go. Is it possible to search for routes using OSM API? How many requests per day is one allowed to do? So the answer to the first question is definitely yes. Uh, I'm not sure it's this uh, API. So overpass is for downloading or uploading a small numbers of points. But for, for routing, there is another API which I used back in Poland but I don't really remember the name. But there is definitely an API for the routing only. There you can specify, I'm interested in a cycling roads which are well, paved or asphalt or whatever. Uh, how many requests per day is one allowed to do? I don't think it's tracked. You don't even need registration. You can run all these queries from your computer right now with, with no subscription. But there is some uh, queuing mechanism, and if there are many requests, you get at the end of the queue and uh, you're waiting. The other option which you have, if you wanted to run many requests, is to download the entire OSM to your local machine. Uh, that's called, for example, Planet Osmosis, is one, 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 one of their products. And then that they publish the entire world every day and each continent four times of day and you can run those queries at your local or I mean in your company so then you no longer have a limitation in the number of requests. Oh. Do, does it answer you? <laughs> yeah, Honza. How big would my hard disk be to download the whole database? I think it's 220 gigabytes. I think so, it was hundreds of gigabytes, yeah. not larger. But you can, I assume, you don't need to download the entire entire world, right? You would be interested in parts of the Europe. Uh, I think I can also promote the Cessnam team. They they offer you offline mapping uh, app for using elsewhere in Europe, and the the mapping uh, backgrounds are actually OSM maps, and you know you can download the southern Germany or western Austria and that then it's much smaller. Yeah, but the entire world was hundreds of gigabytes. Can you incorporate public transport from Google Maps? Or? So are, are you asking about public transport yeah. in OSM? Can you incorporate that somehow, those routes? No, sorry, I really don't hear you. <laughs> Can you incorporate public transport routes directly into OSM? Oh, yes, yes. The question is whether you could... <laughs> incorporate the roads of a public public transport yes it, it's there so uh, an example I'm not showing here is but uh, 
I can query how many tram stops go around our building in Carlin, about the building from Twisto, for, for <laughs> I spoke about the recursion. So uh, in Carlin you have this uh, viaduct for uh, this bridge for railways. So if you look for all relations close to our office, you found the railway uh, track from Praha Masarykovo Nadraži to Kralupy nad Vltavou, you find the, the name of this of this track so with this s7 i think and it's all there there are no timetables there but you can find out that what single stop belongs to this public transport and it's the same for trams and for night trams and for night buses so if i would just to walk to the street now and then would you incorporate like high differences and stuff like that would it yeah so you would switch to that this are you asking how to incorporate them, right? Yes. Yeah, so in the map you would, you would first list the tram stops. Uh, there, there might be one here, I think. Not sure, but you would enlist the points as a tram stops, and then you would connect these points through a way, I guess, and you would tag that this way has the members, these tram stops, and you would tag that it's a tramway, so a way for a tramways, you would probably name it by, it could be tram number nine, and then you could say this is a daytime train, train, sorry, daytime tram, and so on. But it starts, really, even if you want to list, say, a building, you start by listing this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner, and then these four corners and you say my my way since building is an area my way is all between these two polygons you typically start with uh, with stops like points no <laughs> Yeah, so the question is, uh, I'm speaking about ways, uh, but polygons are not necessarily ways. So they have a two concepts. One of them is about what you describe, and then they speak about polygon, which is closed, or uh, I think surface is the other one, which can be open. But conceptually, they they put it into one one box, which is called way, not them as a ways. But you're right. I noticed that in the wiki again that, that there are various way attitudes how to call it depending on whether you're mapping or whether you want to best, best describe what what's, uh, what it's about. And there was another question, Slido. Uh, or no, Slido. I, 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 my question is: Is there support for moving or floating objects like <laughs> <laughs> So, I think what you can list in the map are objects which are provided by the latitude and longitude. There is no time coordinate. <laughs> no, no, there, there is not. Uh, but what you could do is to uh, to to map a road or a boat. But the boat itself, no, no, <laughs> that, that's not the case. Let me see the slide question. Here we go. How is number or quality of objects in OSM in comparison with Mapi.cz or Google Maps? So. <laughs> so. Uh, in Czech Republic, Google Maps are quite good, and I think the reason is that we have a strong local competitor here. In Poland, there is no map CZ, and Twisto expanded to Poland last year, and we find the level or the content of Google Maps much less reliable. And then you can resort to OSM to, to retrieve more content. Indeed, the content is created by the community. So if there are people in Poland who are willing to, to export the Polish cadastro and load it into OSM, you will have a Polish cadastro there. If it's only up to people who are mapping their neighborhood, it, it can be questionable. 
but in the city center of Warsaw, I, I learned that English name for that small column which is located next to the pavement so that the cars can't park partly on the road, partly, partly on the pavement, since these columns called, called, and I don't know the name anymore, but Bollard, written with double L. These columns are mapped there one by one. What I also know is that Map is CZ allows you to search for a chilled playground. This is my light motif. And uh, I think there is no official republic wide source of playgrounds other than OSM playgrounds. But uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Map is CZ provides this uh, search for people who are not <laughs> using the uh, OSM queries. Still, I think that OSM might contain a bit more than Mappy CZ, but this is my personal impression, right? So last one, last yeah, the last one. Is it working? Uh, <laughs> yeah, slightly with it is. The maps are too. Is it possible to use OSM data for commercial purposes? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, so, Mappy CZ uh, provided by SESMAM are a good example of commercial service, which is using OSM. It's all free. All you, I think, shall do, but it's more a moral must than a legal must, contribute back. It's like with any open software, right? You're, you're encouraged to use it, and it's up to you whether you contribute back. Yeah, so it's used for commercial purposes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so th the question was, uh, who is running OSM? Whether I know anything about the infrastructure? I don't really know. I'm a data scientist using the data from OSM, and I'm also paying back by contributing by the points. But I really don't know how this works, how distributed or centralized it is. I really don't know. We should stop there. Stop here because we have a lightning talk. So thank you again. Thank you.